Hey everybody, it's time for an arm day. Man, I don't think anyone ever expected to see Jason Blah doing an arm day, but here we are. So, why did I do this? Why did I pick full arm day for today? Um, I really realized kind of a push-pull arms legs really works best for my setup, particularly given that my arms need the most development. Uh, and the thing with that is I've realized that since I'm going to do things like upright rows, I really can't even superset my biceps with the shoulders effectively from the start of the, the training. And if I do triceps and biceps, I can totally do that. I can do tricep and bicep all the way through, superset them, get that tremendous pump, uh, and roll with it. Plus, the other thing I had to think about, it's like, well, I was thinking about switching to that next week, and I'm like, my arms technically need more attention than my shoulders do. I'll just skip shoulders this week, right? It's not like we didn't do incline benching and benching and pull-ups and rows. So push come to shove, my arms need more work. So I decided to just have two tricep days this week uh, because I did them after chest. And here's the thing I'm going to say. My triceps are definitely stronger if I don't bench first and do incline and all of that. Um, noticeable on things like the skull crushers. So what do we do? Uh, close grip bench. I used to be really strong at close grip. Like, the fact that sets of 8 with 225 were challenging for me on close grip shows that I am pretty much a full wide grip bencher now. All this long time of wide grip benching, my close grip has regressed, right? Because I used to be able to crank out, you know, 245 for sets of 10 on this. When I was close gripping 365, yep. So 20 pounds heavier for two more reps. And these were challenging. They were very challenging. Uh, and I noticed it immediately. Once I started doing them, I felt that lateral head of my tricep. I'm like, yep, yeah, there it is. Okay, let's go ahead and bring it back. So we're going to obviously, chest day, we're going to keep doing the really wide benching like I do all the way with the uh, pointer finger on the rings. So this is going to be the exact opposite. We're going to take it all the way to the edge of the smooth. Right about where I used to have the really biggest bench at when I close gripped exclusively. So what I decided to do is superset that with really strict barbell curls, okay? And uh, yeah, they felt good. Good pump. Uh, but again, the same thing here. The curls, I'm noticing if I don't do chin-ups or pull-ups first, obviously I'm a little stronger. So there is something to be said for that. And that's kind of the thing that's going on with the split training. It will let me prioritize stuff. And the data just isn't showing the old stuff on frequency. So when people need to understand my thing pushing the two time a week frequency, or even three in some cases for novices, was based upon old research, right? That has been kind of a bit debunked. And I've seen plenty of experts say, yeah, that evidence was, was really poorly done. All that stuff with um, muscle protein synthesis supposed to work out. There's, there's not really good evidence that any of that's true. And then we had studies coming out showing just as much growth when volume was equal, almost irrespective of frequency. Plus again, how many bodybuilders and even non-bodybuilders, people have built really great physiques once a week. And I've even had clients who have done it with. So I'm like, let's just do that. And then it will let me really, really prioritize each muscle because it, it makes a big difference I'm noticing, right? if you're coming in and you're doing them first. You know, so the, what would be kind of the exception for me would be stuff like the shoulders. My delts then are gonna be done after my chest. That might make them a little weaker. But realistically, my shoulders get so much work on all these other days, I'm not worried about it. It's really just pump work. I don't feel like they're particularly, uh, you know, underdeveloped relative to other stuff. Not like my arms are. And my arms have gotten better. Um, so, what did we do afterwards? We did skull crushers. All right, here's the thing. I did this for 12 my last time. I did sets of 12 with this weight. And I went to do this. I got to like 18. And I'm like, this is just getting silly. All right, the 18 started to get heavy. Let's just quit. Let's add some weight. I'm like, let's go up 20 pounds. And then we got sets of 12. So just not doing all that benching first, just doing close grip bench first. Interesting how much difference there, there was in the strength on these immediately. Okay. Or i just getting stronger from having a, <laughs> I don't know, the triceps the other day. Maybe adding the extra stretch work helped. Because when I got to that same exercise, I was much stronger today. Considerably stronger. All right, this is one people weren't expecting. These felt so good 
I went ahead and ordered a preacher bench. I should have it before next arm day. I wanted to do preacher curls, and I knew I probably wanted to get a preacher curl bench, but it's like, eh, can I justify the space? Uh, you know, floor space issues. But then when I look at it, I have to go, my arms need the most work. Like realistically, if I just continue to get leaner and put an inch on my arms, my channel and stuff will probably blow up further. It's worth it, um, given how good the preacher curl can be when done carefully. Now, people say, didn't you say that it's a bicep tear waiting to happen? Yeah, tons of people tear biceps on preacher curls. The trick, train it through the full range of motion. Don't use a weight that's so heavy that you cannot do rep work out of the, out of the bottom. Now, in this case, notice I'm, I'm touching the bench. I'm coming to a stop on the bench. I don't have a choice because this is what I'm working with. And a lot of people recommend this and you can get away with this. And it still was really intense. Um, the bicep activation was fantastic. I can tell I'm going to be sore tomorrow. It worked my biceps in ways I was not expecting. And I used to do preacher curls way, way, way back in the day. I just haven't done any in over 20 years. Particularly given my previous bicep rupture in my late 20s um, from deadlifting. But I think if we hold true to that message that you do them through the full range of motion, you don't cheat and you keep them nice and strict. Right? So you're not cheating, you're not risking tearing the bicep because you're trying to use a weight that can't go through the bottom and you actually use it correctly because that's really where it shines, the bottom. It is one of the best length and position movements you can do for your biceps. And I felt it. Like, I already know my biceps are going to be sore tomorrow. Like, you guys can see my face near the end of the sets. Yeah, I was on some of these sets. I put up a screenshot and someone said, you look like you're in pain there. I'm like, yeah, I was. These hurt. I mean, not in a bad way. But I noticed it. You know, and here's the thing. Now that we're really hitting the arms from all these angles, we're going to have an arm day. Um, I think all any of the jokes about me not having arms, I think they're going to go away real quick because they've come up already. Uh, this is going to take me up to the next tier. I'm pretty sure of it, particularly now that we're really focusing on the different angles, making sure that we're getting full length and position movements in. Again, the preacher bench will help. This is already a start, though. So again, I'm, I'm just touching it to it and then coming back up. Uh, but yeah, intense pump, intense burn. And my arms stayed pumped all the way through this way. You can see my face there. I'm not even on the last rep yet. It's like, oh man, I gotta keep digging in. <laughs> so yeah, they work. Uh, so again, same thing, close grip bench, skull crushers. We've got some of the big ones here for the, for the, for the tricep. And then we're gonna do the behind the, the head extension at the end. We're gonna make sure that we hit all those angles. And that's gonna be the name of the game. All these muscles like this, we're gonna find three good angles. We're gonna make absolutely sure at least one of them puts us into a very, very serious stretch position. Get into that lengthened position. Now this does it actually for the tricep, just not as maybe as intense as the behind the head does, which then we do afterwards. So look at my combination here. What do we got? Close grip bench press. So, so we've got a nice big basic lift, right? Nice big heavy compound. This is kind of how I'm treating a lot of the muscles here. Then we take one of the most famous, most heavily used, uh, well-loved isolation movements. Still considered a basic movement, we do a skull crusher after. And then we're gonna finish off with what? The behind the head to make sure that we double down on that length and position to finish. Uh, but again, here are the, the preacher curls. I still, I managed to get 10 all the way through. It's because I had to fight a little deeper on the final sets. All right, I have a feeling um, these will come up pretty quickly, and I know it's gonna bring up my lower bicep. You know, everyone worries a lot about it sometimes with some of the insertions. I think if you build those areas up enough, it can compensate for some of that. Um, and again, the data's pretty good. There's been some hypertrophy studies comparing a lot of this stuff. And yeah, we know the preacher curl for the lower half of the bicep seems to be a pretty superior exercise. Now, I predict the incline curl, which I'm doing at the end, you guys will see. I predict it's gonna probably work the, the top half a little better. Again, this is the thing that we find with these, these muscles. And I'm trying to think like a bodybuilder with this stuff. 
Okay, I'm still going to do some of my big three a little bit like a power lifter. So this is almost really power building. We are going to go heavy. We're going to take my squat bench and deadlift and treat them like serious heavy lifts, right? Which I'm doing. Everything else I do outside of those three lifts, it's all going to be very bodybuilder, thinking like a bodybuilder. Notice, you know, a lot of on some of these movements really trying to control these centric, especially those last reps. I can't do that on some things easily, like the behind the head extension, because this is uncomfortable for me because of my shoulders. But the thing is, I can still do it, and that's the main thing. That's the main thing. And as long as we get that lengthened position, that's what I care about. And I'm going to keep working on getting better at these. This felt too light, so I went up again. I went up on this from last time. The last time it was just getting used to it. And I used to do these standing with a barbell. You guys used to see it early on on my YouTube. I feel like I had a little more tricep back then. Uh, all right, incline curls. Went ahead and used the 28s today. Um, got 10 plus reps on everything. I pretty much took it to failure at the end. You guys will see on the, definitely the last one we went to failure. Uh, the barbell curls were also. But yeah, these, these also burn, but they burn in a different way. They burn in a completely different way. So again, what are we doing then for the biceps? Taking a nice, big, basic movement, the standing barbell curl, done strict. Cheek curl would probably be big and basic. But we're keeping it strict. Then what did we do? Doing a preacher curl. Dumbbells today, I'll, I'll try it with the easy bar with a closer grip uh, once I get the bench and I'll get that longer range of motion. And then we finish with an incline curl. We have hammered the biceps through every possible angle for the main, the main functions of the bicep. Now, when people say, are you worried extra about brachialis or forearms? No, because look at my pulling day. I do weighted pull-ups. I do barbell rows. Well, I did seal rows this time. I may do barbell rows next time. And then dumbbell rows. They all for hard sets. Uh, plus I deadlift first. So I feel like that's pretty well still managed. Um, keep in mind this also, a lot of this still works brachialis, still works forearms. Okay. So those last couple, few sets of incline curls, those are a failure. Those are completely missed reps. I'm still going to have to keep getting used to these behind the head extensions. But the main thing, and it's because of, again, my anatomy, I can't really lock them effectively. But I don't care. Because we're we've got the skull crushers for that we've got the really what's was our real lockout strength that close grip bench press these since i can't do it i don't care i'm just trying to get into that deep stretch position which it is doing that is what we are using them for so work with it and then last set of incline curls these also still burned like hell took them to failure uh, finished this with a great arm pump super happy with the workout didn't fully like the range of motion on the preacher curls but they still felt intense so i hope it's been informative and i will talk to you guys and gals next time